good, uh, good to see everybody. <laughs> and uh, I thank Patrick for putting this together. Um, I did send his email to every one of my clients. Uh, and I, a lot of them are non-ILDA members, but it was so last minute, I'm not sure how many people will, will be able to attend, but we can certainly get the word out. And it was very easy to go to the website and uh, you know, uh, communicate with my representatives. I appreciated that very much, sir. Um, Patrick did a phenomenal job, phenomenal. Yeah, right, exactly. And it was just, you know, and that's what, I hate to say it, but to get people involved, the easier it is, the better, you know, that, and uh, that was uh, really seamless. So, um, and I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow up with them all and see, did you? <laughs> and really, believe me, it's this easy, you know, and we'll see, um, just really think it's important. This is our livelihoods. This is our lives at stake, you know? It's, Absolutely. Well, again, let, me, let me get started then. Um, I want to uh, uh, tell everybody, uh, hopefully you saw the information that we sent out. Um, as you know, the information is at the website. So if you have not seen it, you just go to the ILDA homepage and you click on the coronavirus information page. There's a little link there, or you can look for it elsewhere. Once you get to that page, there is a red bar, make your voice heard. The yellow is all about the Zoom. And then we have some background information and the three things that you can do that Michael Strickland is going to tell us more about why these things are useful and how soon we have to do them, which is basically yesterday. Um, and any other information uh, for us, Michael. So you want to go ahead? Yeah, again, thank you for having me, Patrick. I appreciate it. And, and uh, the, the, the website that you put up is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I, I also will say to this group, uh, uh, Stephen has has been been the yeoman in all of this. We met through through this. Uh, I don't I don't remember who reached out to whom, but you know my backstory is I backed into this because I happened to know some politicians and I and I wrote a couple of articles, and then I wrote the same storm different boat article and that got a whole bunch of attention and and then all of a sudden people started emailing and they said well tell me what you know and, and you know i had 20 and 30 and 50 and 70 and then 100 and then 200 and now we're up to nearly 700 people but that's not the power the power is not not in what i'm doing the power is all of those 700 people like stephen like patrick stephen and because of stephen patrick's here and because of patrick uh, ILDA is here and, and what you're going to do today is going to go to your what, thousand members, which is going to multiply to you know, each one of them knows four people. So there's 4,000, so on and so forth. But Stephen brought in some extraordinary media, some extraordinary contacts, some extraordinary political connections. Uh, uh, just just the, the, the expansion through, what's, through what Stephen has been able to do has been phenomenal. And, and what we're doing here today is phenomenal and timely. Uh, and and the, the power of this is, is the numbers. And uh, again, I, I'm probably repeating myself, Steve, and I apologize because you, you've heard a lot of this. No, it's but, fine. It, it's, I think, you know, repetition is the mother of skill. And as we keep repeating it and repeating the same message with one voice for live entertainment, you know, that's, that's really what's going to stick. And, and, and we have, we have been lucky enough because of, you know, we're having this conversation here in this sort of echo chamber, uh, but, but through all of this, Broadway people have been brought in, film and television people, uh, rock and roll people, bus companies, truck companies, laser companies, pyro companies, venue people, booking agents. Uh, uh, it, it's, you know, we've been able to wrap a bunch of people together and, and I'll explain to you what's been in several of the written things. The reason that, that NAM has become the spearhead, uh, you know, three years ago, two years ago, and even beginning of this year, I didn't know why Terry Lowe and the people at Polestar had, had, had joined in with the NAM event, because that was to me music stores and below, and I didn't understand it. But I, I now fully embrace NAM, and, and my goal after this is over is to get as many vendors as I can to, to join NAM, it's $220 a year. They have uh, a 25, 30 year old uh, 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 lobbying effort. Uh, two years ago, they got $1.4 billion for education. NAM is a known entity on the Hill. Uh, Bandit Lights is not a known entity on the Hill. Uh, none of us are known entities on the Hill. NAM is a known entity. And I've had a lot of people say, well, why did you pick on NAM? NAM came to me. 
uh, Joe Lamont came to me early in this and, and said that, that they NAM had recognized a problem, which is they've got from the music store and below. And if you've ever been to NAM, you know, you go into NAM and there's Taylor Swift over there signing autographs and there's John Bon Jovi over there signing autographs. I mean, the pop stars are there. They had, they had everything on the low end and they had the, they had the big boys, but they didn't have the live event folks, which includes you. They had nothing about live events in there. And they realized when all this happened, unless a guy standing on stage actually playing a guitar, they're not selling guitars. And, and so that's when they realized that we need to be part of them. And the way I sum it all up is when a kid picks up a guitar at age five, he wants to be John Bon Jovi. And this is about that trip. And we're part of that trip. And, and laser people are part of that trip because all the big shows use lasers. So it makes sense holistically, and that this is sort of my next endeavor, that we get as many people involved into it. We pay our $200 a year, but we've got a voice. We hope we never need that voice. But if we all belong, and right now they're, they're lobbying on our behalf absolutely for free. Now, is it on their behalf? Absolutely. But, but it's more centered toward our need than music store needs, although it's the same need. So that, that was kind of the reason for the NAM wrapping. I've got no political voice in it. And I'd also like to say that all of the industry publications that I'm aware of have been phenomenal and have jumped on board. So, so now I'll pivot into where we are and what we can do next, uh, which ties in, Patrick, to what I said earlier. I don't know if this train comes to a halt tomorrow at four, Friday at five, or next week at two. I don't know. Uh, Typically, I don't know what you know about the Senate and the House, typically they start at noon on Monday and they end at noon on Friday. The reason for noon is it allows them to get to, to work and to leave work and get home to their wherever they live. The truth of the matter is they typically don't work Monday and they typically don't work Friday, so they work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know right now if they're going to end session tomorrow at four o'clock or not. Uh, I suspect they'll go through five o'clock on Friday. Uh, Last weekend, uh, Pelosi and Schumer and Mnuchin and Meadows met Saturday from 9 to 11. Uh, and then their staffs met all day Sunday, and then they went back to work on Monday, and they're still at it. And right now, you've got to consider the kitchen being those four people. And those four people are in the kitchen together right now. The senators are having some input, but, but the real work is in the kitchen. And think about it, you're in the kitchen cooking, what are you cooking with? You're cooking with the groceries that you brought. Well, the one grocery that helps us that's in the kitchen is the Heels Bill. And the, the Heels Bill has three, short, three problems, which I pointed out, Stephen knows this. Number one, it's only 10 weeks of PPP. Number two, it's, a, it's triggered by your revenue loss in the last uh, year, uh, you know, six, seven months of which you got no revenue, and it's capped at $2 million, which is enough for some people, but not for others. That's all been pointed out to the guy that wrote the bill, which is Marco Rubio. So I'd hate, it, hate for it to be the, the Hills bill as written because it, it, it only goes halfway and the trigger is so bad that it mutes the money you could earn. So we, we've been taking two paths. One is to pound and pound and pound Rubio, and we have been, to, to, to make those three small changes. In fact, I actually wrote them, and I think Stephen has seen them, and distributed them. I mean, I actually put, I wrote it like it would be written in the bill and sent it, sent it to a number of people who have sent it to, to Rubio. So that's the one path. The other path is restart, and if you haven't seen restart, I'll send it to you. But basically, in a nutshell, it will give you 45% of last year's revenue for you to do with as you see fit. And that's much, that's the glove that seems to fit most all because you can take that money and uh, just like PPP, uh, they will allow you to deduct payroll and payroll related items and they've expanded it. They will allow you to pay rent. They will allow you to pay interest on a mortgage. They will allow you to pay for uh, PPP equipment. They will allow you to pay for internet. They will allow you to pay for uh, uh, a small number of other things. And all of that will be forgiven. Uh, the portion that isn't forgiven right now would convert to a seven year, either two or three percent loan. There's a lot of talk about that being converted to a 10 or 20 year, one percent loan. And there seems to be a lot of weight behind that push. Again, these are answers I've been unable to get in the last three days of, you know, where does that lie? Where does that lie? But at the worst case, it's, it's seven year, two to three percent. Now, and, and Stephen and I have discussed this. 
in your head, you can do 45% of last year's income, gross income for most people, that's way more than you need. Uh, so if you do the math, you go, okay, well, you know, I made $10 million last year, so I could get 4.5 million. I only need 2 million to get through the end of the year. Do I want to take the rest of the money? Uh, and, and that's a question that, that only you can answer. And, and I've talked to a lot of people that are going to take it all and just keep a cheap loan. And, you know, if, if it's a 20 year 1% loan, you might do it. If it's a seven year 3% loan, you might not do it. But again, no one can answer where that sits, but that's what's being looked at. The reason restart is a better fit for most of our industry is I have come to find out, and I don't know about your industry, but the venue people, and you may be in the same boat, for the most part, employ their staffs via 1099. So to, to go with the, the HEALS Act, which is Rubio's bill, Senate Bill 4321, uh, if most of your people are 1099, it doesn't trigger a very big PPP. And it doesn't give you much money to pay yourself or, or your limited staff, but it gives you no money for overheads. And, and even if we get it extended to 20 weeks, if uh, it just doesn't work for venues. I've had long conversations with them because most venues seem to employ three or four people, but they've got you know, 30 or 40 people because they bring in the concessions people and the stagehands and the janitor and all of those folks freelance. And you, you may or may not be in the same boat. So that is why restart really works better because the, the PPP just doesn't help a lot of people that use a lot of freelance labor. Uh, there are two schools of thought and, and two conversations that I'm getting. Uh, one conversation is the fact that 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 the HEALS Act is the one they've kind of gotten behind. Uh, and it, it has in it, actually in the separate bill in, in the Senate Bill 4321, uh, this, this Rubio mechanism for just strictly PPP. Now, the one advantage to that system versus the other system. I have pushed and others have pushed and under the HEALS proposal, under the Rubio bill, we have pushed and pushed and pushed you would potentially use all the paperwork that you filled out previously for the SBA for your uh, next tranche of PPP, which would be easy. Under the Restart Act, they haven't said at all what the mechanism was be. And, and, and I know from the last time, there will probably be, let's assume we go down the restart road. There will probably be a two to three week period when you have to go do some extraordinary laborious paperwork to get that stood up. And for those of you that did PPP, you know how painful it was. And not only was it painful, it changed while you were doing it. You know, not, no, not that, this. And you, you got a list of papers you needed. And then four days later, it was a different list of papers. And four days later, it was a different set of papers. And I believe that that process will be just as flawed and just as difficult. Point in my rambling, and I apologize, is that I've told them if they don't, if they're not reliant on the prior SBA paperwork, then there will be a three week lag in getting it all done. And you won't really see money until middle of September, end of September. I mean, how quick would you see money? And again, I've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who may not be in business August 15th if they don't see money. And that was originally the goal was to get something done so that money could be flowing by August 15th. Again, the, these things are determined by the US Treasury. Those, they're called Treasury regulations. So what the politicians do is they, they, they hand off the bill and then Treasury comes back five days later and they actually legally have 10 to, to write the regulations. Well, what happened with the original PPP was the regulations were flawed and a bunch of us had to fight to change the regulations. And, and if you don't know now, they have basically forgiven any loan under $150,000 really with no paperwork, you just, you're forgiven. Uh, they've also, as you know, extended uh, the payout period from the original eight weeks to December 31st. So I, I believe that will happen in whatever they stand up. So what can we do now? And again, I, I apologize. I'm trying to get your head around what's potentially out there. If I had to guess right now, they're not going to pass the restart bill as a standalone bill. They just don't work that way. They would lift the language out of the restart bill and drop it into whatever the big bill is. 
And you got to remember that you've all seen the thing with rocks, big rocks, little rocks, tiny rocks, and sand. We're kind of the small, medium rocks in the jar. And right now they're focusing on money for schools, money for hospitals, state money, uh, uh, unemployment, has to unemployment insurance, which I can tell you now the Republicans, there's enough Republicans that are supporting $600 that I believe that will remain through the end of the year. Uh, because the Democrats will all vote for it. And, and I, I just believe it'll end up at 600. Uh, there was a time when I would have told you four, but right now that's become a sticking point. And I think the Republicans have retreated and I think it'll be six. So the real focus for the passage, again, to me is the state's money, uh, but back to us, what's it gonna look like? Regardless of whether it's this Friday or next Tuesday, uh, it feels like restart. And here's the reason. Uh, we have had six senators, excuse me, six House reps sign on today and three senators sign on today. So you're up over 50 senators and you're up over 80 House members and th they're actually pushing for it. Uh, and, and holistically, it solves our needs. So right now, if, you, if I had to give you an educated guess, uh, it will be some version of restart with some tweaks to the percentages perhaps. Uh, and th that would ultimately give you basically 45% of last year's income. The thing that I'm pushing for even beyond the deadline is uh, the treasury regulations, which that is so granular, there's nothing that you can do about treasury regulations. That, you know, there's a handful of people that will work on the treasury regulations uh, that there's no way to email treasury. Uh, I, I'm fortunate enough that I, I have a direct line to Steve Mnuchin. I've actually spoken to him twice. Um, I can get information to Mnuchin and I give it to, to my two uh, pol political people that, that uh, one of my congressmen here is Jimmy Duncan. Well, he's good friends with Mnuchin. Uh, uh, Lamar Alexander is a dear, dear friend of mine. He's good friends with Mnuchin. So through Jimmy Duncan and through Lamar Alexander, I get stuff to Mnuchin. And for those of you that hadn't heard the story on March 15th, I was talking to Lamar who was with Mnuchin and he put it on speaker and Mnuchin said, uh, well, yeah, it, it's all canceled, but surely you're gonna get paid. And I said, why would you think that? And he goes, well, you've got contracts, don't you? And I said, yeah, but there's a thing called force majeure. Well, what do you mean? And I said, well, in show business, this force majeure is in all contracts. And when the show's canceled, nobody gets paid. And he goes, well, surely they're going to pay you anyway. Aren't they honorable people? That kind of thing. And I went, yeah, that doesn't work in show business. When the show's canceled, nobody gets paid. And Mnuchin, it got real quiet. And he went, what a stupid business. And, uh, you know, I had to agree, but it's the business we chose. And, uh, but, but anyway, uh, so I chip away at that. I won't, I'm not trying to make you believe I'm a guy connected to Treasury or even to Mnuchin, but I can get brief little things to him and I can point out stupidities and, 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 and I will delve into helping, helping attempt to help to get the Treasury regulations written to get that interest rate down to 1% and, and to make sure that, that there's nothing in the Treasury regs that trip us up. Uh, I do have the luxury or have had in the past of seeing the proposed treasury regulations uh, before they actually come out because they'll send them to me to comment on. And then I can, you know, I can pass my opinion on the regulations. And indeed, in the first round of PPP, one of the first things I saw was the fact that the $600 a month coming out of the treasury regs in the state of Tennessee and in many states puts people way over what they make. So I pointed that out way back when but that was a non-negotiable point to the Democrats and the Republicans just conceded and it went forward. Again, we're back in that same boat. And uh, I'm proud to say Tennessee has the lowest state unemployment contribution in the nation, 225 a week. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting on the dead ass bottom. But, uh, and, and I saw that I believe it's, uh, I believe Washington State's the highest at 780. So if you take Washington at 780 and add 600, you're making 1380 a week, which probably is very livable. But anyway, uh, what can you do and, and what's next? Go to the website, encourage everybody else to go to the website and, 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 and follow the instructions. The more weight that we give uh, to our cause is by those clicks and by those letters. Uh, 
if you know a politician, if you know a, a politician's staff member, make a direct reach out to them. Uh, I, I know it seems innocuous. I know it seems small. I know it seems tiny, but I'll share one last thing with you. Uh, we did two NAM uh, reach outs. We did the first one mid-June and we did the second one, excuse me, mid-July and the second one, did the first in early July and the second one July 16th. If you go back and look at the list of people, senators and Congress people that were signed on to uh, restart, the two original sponsors put it up 521. No one joined until after the first NAM call to action on June 4th, uh, excuse me, on July 4th. Uh, so the NAM call to action came out and we picked up 12 senators in the next three days. Then we put out what I call the D-Day email on July 16th and we picked up 22 senators and 40 odd house members. And then I began getting phone calls and conversations with a large number of staff. And uh, Stephen will remember this because he was in on it. NAM actually gave us the direct emails for that July 16th email to their chief of staff and to their legislative director. It wasn't just the general box, which is what this will take you to. It actually went to, you know, my name's Bob and I work for uh, Senator X. It went to Bob's cell phone. Well, we had literally hundreds of thousands of emails go to these senators and Congress people's two chief staff members, direct personal emails. And it almost became ugly because I began getting phone calls, texts, and emails going, stop, stop. This, this is my personal email. I've gotten literally 4,000 emails and, and I have to go delete, 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 delete. And it pissed them off. It pissed them off. So I got back with Chris Cushing, the guy from the, the lobbyist from, for NAM. And there's two ways to look at that. One is we've pissed them off. And the two of the other version is they've heard us. Now I'll wrap this up by saying that since then, I have had a number of uh, legislators and their lobbyists tell me that by a factor of 10 live events has contacted them more than anybody, including the restaurant business. And, and I, I believe that to be, I know it's true, but, but I believe the reason is, think about it. A restaurant has a manager and an assistant manager and you know, 10 people that work there. I don't think they communicate with their wait staff like this. You know, I don't think they have organizations like this. I don't think that, that they loop in their, their wait staff. You know, and, and the big numbers in the restaurant business is the wait staff and, and the unemployed. So in the restaurant business, you know, they would get you know, two reach outs from, from every restaurant. And, and in most of the other businesses, it works this way. But because we are in truly a band of gypsies, and we are linked <laughs> through all these phenomenal organizations and through all these great people like Patrick and Stephen. Uh, and, 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 and there's one everywhere. There's one in every organization and, and in every walk of life. Suddenly we hit them in volume. And I'm still hearing that. So again, if, it gives me great pride to go look at, you can go on the congressional website and, and see the list of who signed up. And you can see the 16th came and then 22 senators signed up. And so that's why this matters. And again, I apologize for being so long winded, but I'm emotional about this. Uh, we've got to continue to reach out to them. And I do believe that this set of people that you're going to reach after today is, is a new set of people. And uh, what happens is that email goes in and every day a staff member gives the congressperson or the senator a report that says today we got four people concerned about animal rights and three people concerned about uh, climate change and 400 people concerned about live entertainment and they get that in a spreadsheet and it gets their attention and uh, that's the strength of what we do uh, I hope that by the end of today if not today tomorrow we will have another call to action via NAM which Patrick would be pushed to you obviously uh, and then you can push it to your people the reason we don't have one now is there's no clarity on what we're going to ask for, if you follow me, and until we get a hint of, of which path they're going to take. Uh, we, we can't really do another call to action. And I don't know if that's gonna come today or tomorrow, but, but again, pay attention. I urge everybody in your organization, 
to do it uh, to do this reach out that's there now but there will be another one and it will matter uh, because while we're fighting for restart and so are about 15 other industries uh, there are other people you know there's hospital people fighting for money there's there's airplane people fighting for money and they're clearly outside of restart restarts a very narrow band of people and, and I will close by saying uh, that that letter from Howard Schultz that Stephen made me aware of, thank you very much, uh, was so powerful. Uh, it got picked up globally, it got picked up in all over Europe and China and Japan. Just go Google uh, Howard Schultz letter last 24 hours and you'll be blown away. And uh, it, it went to all of these people. Well, all of my political contacts, most of them, 30 of them yesterday, Stephen, you get a kick out of this. They emailed it to me. They said, have you seen this? Yeah. Oh, and, your name's on it. And I answered, have you read who signed it? Look at the bottom. Yeah. And almost every one of them obviously hadn't read the, the signers other than they saw Disney and all of that. And they came back and went, wow. <laughs> but the credibility that that the need got from that letter is phenomenal. And the fact that Stephen and I and a couple of other people uh, within the, the pyro industry signed it, again, gives it credence in that, hey, our industry is represented. And that wouldn't have happened without Stephen. And that's the kind of power that I'm talking about. I, I didn't know about that. You know, Stephen told me about it. And I don't know who told you about it, but, but that's the power in it. And, yeah. and Believe it or not, I've now swapped four emails with with uh, with Howard Schultz. We're buddies now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he's a wonderful man. We couldn't have had a better advocate. And Michael, as Michael so eloquently said, you know, we're just a bunch of band. We're a band of gypsies, and we're we're, we're some some way in shape or form interconnected and in this together. I mean, we are all. Uh, to me, it's always been what's good for you is good for me, and we have to fight for this industry because we matter. We do incredibly important work for society and for this country. And early on, a lot of people didn't know, people just think shows happen. Yep. They don't realize that there are people involved, there are companies involved, there's gear involved, there's design involved. Um, and, and ILTA getting the word out to its memberships and its membership reaching out to their congressional folks as well as their senators and and supporting restart as well as I, I've been telling everyone to pick up the phone and call and see where, where where does the senator stand on on you know independent contractors when it comes to live entertainment because everybody matters I mean if you put a gun to my head my and ask me what was the number one thing I wanted to do today and that's to get everyone back to work we just don't know when that's going to happen and we need a bridge to get there and you, you brought up a good point, Stephen. I, I shared this with Patrick, and I think I've shared it with you in the past. There are a handful of people that sit in a different boat, and that includes you guys and gals. Uh, Pyro, Lasers, Broadway, uh, uh, all won't be back until after live end is. Now, Broadway won't be back because they decided they're, they're dark till June or July. Uh, but but uh, uh, the pyro business is big time, as, as I've come to know, is July 4th. Uh, they'll have some stuff, but significant revenue is July 4th. But pyro and lasers both in the world of live entertainment, and, and I mean this respectfully, not disrespectfully, but there is a hierarchy to how events and artists spend their money. And it, it, and it, it, it never starts with us. I mean, even lights are in the back of the bus, uh, sort of, but I'm in front of you. Uh, but the, you know, buses are the first thing. Why? Because artists like buses. And then after that, it's usually audio because they're really picky about audio. And then after that, sometimes it's lights, sometimes it's video. But I mean, you know, my industry is somewhere third or fourth in the list. But you guys are a luxury, whether you're pyro or laser, because every show doesn't have pyro and lasers. Every show has sound and lights. So what I told Patrick yesterday, I have not forgotten that and I'm continuing and will continue to advance the fact that that Broadway and and pyro and lasers uh, and and to some extent film and television have a different set of needs that's another conversation 
uh, beyond this conversation because whatever they do will only be through the beginning of the year. The good news is there is now conversation about another bill because so many things like that are coming up. Uh, the cruise lines certainly fit into that and they just announced today all the cruise lines have pushed back uh, sale dates to October 21st. But having said that, none of this is germane to them because they're so big. I mean, they're not, they're not playing in our sandbox. But, but that's one of my customers is Carnival Cruise Lines. So I, I've got one of my big customers that's not buying anything and we do millions of dollars a year with them and it's all sitting at zero. So uh, I, I'm not gonna forget you guys. You know, once we get past this, I'm still pushing for those market sectors that, that need a longer runway. And, and I will continue to push for that. And, and it won't be as overt and it won't be as big, but I'm not gonna forsake you because it has to be done. And, and there's a couple of other smaller people that are in that same boat. And you'll keep us informed and then we'll keep our members informed, of course. Yeah, cool. But I'm sure you'll get that question. Because mm -hmm. what we fear and we, we know is happening is we're gonna lose good technicians in all of our, our respective fields to this crisis, people, you know, people have to work, people have to put food on their table and, and, you know, we can't lose a whole industry to, to Amazon and Home Depot. We're, we're, we're all in that situation. We, uh, I've talked to a great number of people and there's, there's two types of people. There's, there's, there's your really qualified office people that can, and in some cases have just gone to another industry. I'm, a, I'm an IT person. I left and went to another company. I'm a marketing person. I left and went to another company. You know, that's already happening. And even some of the road guys and gals are beginning to take jobs in other market sectors. And, and I don't, the way we work at Bandit and most lighting companies, and I can't speak for Pyro, but, but all of our guys and gals make day rates when they're on road and hourly in the warehouse. Well, they're already taking it in the shorts because people that make two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 a week are now making $1,000 a week in the warehouse. And that's a heck of a difference. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's very real. Uh, and, and, and that's going to happen even if we get the funding because the funding won't be big enough to pay people day rates to sit in the warehouse. And, and, and the other big player that I left out of, of the back of the bus, uh, the rear of the caboose is manufacturers. Uh, now your manufacturers for the most part are Chinese and, 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 and it may be a different situation, but sound lights, Ultimately, that is Chinese, but you've got the companies in America that represent them and sell them. And I have frequent conversations with those people because even if touring gets busy in February and March and live events gets busy in February and March, nobody's going to buy any new sound or light or staging stuff until April, May, June, or July. So again, that's another player that I'm not going to forsake as we move forward. There's got to be another six month solution uh, for those industries that are affected like that. Let me ask if any of our members have uh, questions. I know, Roberta, you, um, I think, have already done the, um, sent in some of the letters and things like that. Uh, hopefully, it didn't take you very long. Um, so, anybody have a uh, question they want to? Uh, I've been before? doing it all along through NAM. I've been aware of it. And through the uh, industry magazines, PLSN and uh, FOH. Um, but I really appreciate you commenting on the laser pyro being the last thing in the budget, so to speak. I certainly saw that in 2008, where, you know, when we, when our industry suffered through that recession, and especially those of us that do special effects. So um, thank you for everything you're doing, both uh, you, Steve, and Mike Strickland. It's a pleasure to meet you virtually. And uh, I really value all you're doing and certainly will try to uh, motivate on our end to get people to uh, it was gratifying to hear the numbers of how of the results after Nam did the outreach um, with the with how many how many senators came on board. That is something that I, I will look forward to sharing because it really strikes home that your effort counts. If Absolutely. You take, if you take that minute, you know, and it really isn't more than five to ten minutes to put together a letter, pick up the phone, that it can and does have that effect. That's what this country is supposed to be all about. Is as uh, results for lobbying, they're supposed to listen to us. Thank you. And if, thank you. And if we don't tell our story, it won't be heard. And, right. and you know, we all have a, a broad story that's critically important, but we all have a little bit of uniqueness uh, yeah. in our in our respective fields. But uh, 
if 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 someone's not picking up the phone and calling, uh, we'll never be heard. And it's incredibly important that the laser industry is heard from because, you know, look, the, the industry has been on a, a growth tra trajectory and, and that, you know, this should only be a, a short pause, a temporary pause uh, to get back. You know, it, it's, it's a wonderful industry made up of great people and, uh, you know, we need to fight for it. And I, I, I told Patrick on the phone the other day, I'm, I'm not, I, I was on the road in the 60s and 70s and there was a heavy metal band a thousand years ago called uh, 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 Quiet Riot and I, uh, they were all friends of mine and, and uh, in the early days of lasers, I knew Ed, Ed Oswalks very well and he was sort of the pioneer of bringing lasers into rock and roll and I even blew up some of his laser tubes on Quiet Riot and he's not happy about that because we had concussion mortars that were too close to the laser tubes and it blew them up. And, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the, getting back to the, to the heart of it all, uh, the, the, I started out by saying we live events are in the caboose of the recovery train and, and then it became apparent relatively quickly that this group of pyro and lasers and Broadway and manufacturers and to some extent film and television, you're in the back of the caboose. And, and that's, I'm not gonna give that up. And, and that gets back to NAM. And, and again, I apologize, but I wanna get this message out. All of these great organizations are doing individual things. You've got NEVA and NEDO and, and Event Coalition and, 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 and ILDA and keep doing your thing, do your thing. It's part of it, but, but collectively, when we all got funneled up through NAM, which meant something to the senators and to the house members. Uh, like I say, none of these other organizations, we were a band of gypsies. We were all, you know, we were all, who was the tallest midget in town? And uh, we were all just midgets. And and NAM was sort of the, the, the giant. And then we kind of all coalesced under NAM and did those those two calls to actions. And you can see it uh, in, in in the list of, of when people signed up. And, but that's not to detract from the efforts that all these phenomenal organizations are making. Uh, they all count and, and you need to do it through your organization, but also respond to the NAM things because it, it's just the sheer volume. And, and, and again, I'll, I'll say once more that, that all of my legislative friends and their staff members have told me they've never seen an outreach like they're seeing right now from the live event industry. Uh, so we're, we're the, believe it or not, we're the spearhead above restaurants and cruise lines and everything else, because think about it. They don't have, they don't have the band of gypsies <laughs> that are starving to death pulled together. Well, I think, I think they also don't have Michael Strickland. So I want to thank you very much for what you've done and what Steven's done on this, for getting Ilda involved. We really appreciate it. Um, kind of want to just wrap it up so that people can get to actually uh, writing on the, uh, the uh, information there at our website and telling your friends in the live events industry, asking your employees to write in, dropping names. Am I correct, Michael, that if you say, you know, we did work for, you know, Quiet Riot and yep. you know, Taylor Swift and stuff like that, that gets through a lot more than if we're just like some laser company in you know, Idaho. Absolutely, especially if if it if it has something to do with their their specific state or uh, um, you know area where they serve. If it's mm -hmm. in someone's congressional district, it really uh, it'll 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 pique the interest. And you know, I I've, I'm telling all our folks, and you know, ask your friends to send it in, ask your your spouses to send it in, your kids if they're of, of voting age, because it affects everybody. Are you all familiar with Tyler Truss out of Indiana? Does that mean T yeah. Tyler Truss is the is the world's largest yes. rock and roll trust provider? Uh, yes. Have been for about ten years. They make the trust that we all buy. Well, they're in Indiana. Well, yeah. through all of this, uh, Senator Tim Young was the guy that came up with Restart, but he didn't know Tyler Truss was in his constituency. So I got them glued together, and you're going to read about this if not today, tomorrow. Uh, he's going out to see them Tuesday. And it all happened because of all of this, because I ended up, uh, to, to Stephen's point, uh, I start my personal emails with who I am, and some of my clients include Jimmy Buffett, Garth Brooks. Well, these people see and they go, wow, Jimmy Buffett, I want to talk to this guy, he knows Jimmy Buffett. So I end up with these one-on-one -on -one conversations. So, you know, use what you got. So I ended up in conversation with the young people, 
and we got to have a good relationship. So then I went, by the way, you might not know this, but in your state's the world's largest provider of aluminum trussing for, for the rock and roll industry. And one thing led to another, and now he's going to go out and visit. And that's really cool. Uh, so, so yeah, play those personal relationships uh, to your advantage. If you hear that they have come to agreement tomorrow or uh, uh, Friday, until you hear that it has passed, don't stop. Because, and even after it's passed, and we'll do another reach out, we still got this whole treasury regs things to deal with, and we'll probably pivot to a, uh, a campaign about treasury regulations. Because while you can't directly influence treasury regulations, uh, some of the senators and Congress people can. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 this may go well into next week and maybe even the week beyond on the treasury regs. It just depends on how they write it the first time. And I think Michael brought it up. I think one last thing, if you find things that you're, you know, the laser industry needs specifically that is, missing. has been a dark hole and is missing, bring it up. Sure. Make sure that everybody's aware, aware of it. And from, you know, when you hit it from the safety, the regulatory aspect, um, you know, Roberta, we've done that in the fireworks industry. It's like, we can't yeah. shut off we can't turn the lights on and come back next spring or for right. July. We're in the explosive industry. We have regulatory uh, compliance and filings that we need to do. And yes, we, need, we do. <laughs> and we need, we need people to do, that can't stop. No. And I would say that that should be in a very critical part of the laser right. industries. You know, you're, you're heavily, we're regulated. Yeah, we are. We're very heavily. And that reminds me of safety. Um, have you done outreach to ESA, Event Safety Alliance? Yes, Jim Digby's involved. Good. Great, great. Jim I just Digby. wanted to be sure they were, I knew they would have been, but. Well, great know. question, Roberta. That's going to be another initiative. J just so you all know, going forward, once we get this done, I'm going to pivot to trying to get as many people to join uh, NAM as I can. Uh, Good. I've been doing that too. Ever since Nam went to, um, had Pernelli step in, that's, yeah. we, you know, we always did LDI, you know, if you have to make a choice and I'm going, no, I really think Nam is the one. And uh, you've just proven my point, you know, it's my husband and I felt that way for a long time. Yeah. So, Things get done in numbers. After, yeah. after we pivot to getting people to join, I'm, th I'm personally then going to go to all the uh, 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 lighting manufacturers and, and try to convince them to, to display uh, we've got to have sound people try to get the sound companies to display. So we're going to try to get more people on the floor every year. And then yeah. the, 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 simultaneous to that, but a bigger piece is, and, and this comes out of this, uh, and, and I'm not in charge. I'm just throwing this out there. And, and Jim's all over it. And Joe Lamont's all over it. Yep. We need to make the, the ESA the, the seal of a, the better housekeeping seal of approval for our industry because we don't have one. Totally agree. I mean, totally agree. I think in the next year, if we can get the, the ESA to be the bug, the company, the firm, the thing that gives everybody comfort, then long term we gain. Oh, big time! It, it's it's the ticket for uh, venue for everybody for just yeah. everybody. It really is. If you get their seal of approval, then you yeah. You know, it's it is it is you'll be the preferred person you'll be the preferred company you know and that's but, the name of the game but it just needs to be because well i'm preaching to safety and that's what i do so and, and so far it's apolitical and i think it will remain apolitical and, and i think it will it has been and i think jim's done a fantastic job with that and, and, and esther, his team. esther became political years ago uh, yeah and, and i don't i, I like those i don't know how i really wasn't involved in it but ESA was like a fresh new start, and I, yeah. I, have, I, I don't know if you know, I wrote the laser section for it, but no, I, I yeah, they were they were just fantastic to work with, um, and like you said, then apolitical. It was just um, really, and and they're paying attention to a lot of things other than just physical safety, yep. also the mental health issues, yep. um, which I really admire. I really do. And the education. And which, the education, which, which folds into the to the NAM thing, so yes, yeah, we've, yes. we've got that yeah. working. NAM is I, an awesome organization. I'm, I'm. I've got to ask you, laser great. people, a question, and, and and I hope you know what I'm getting ready to ask you. I've been dying to ask a laser person this. <laughs> what, what do you guys think of the clay packy Zalos? <laughs> um, no, 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 not how it works and all that. No. Politically. Oh, I think it's an amazing product. I, I, I do. I'm a little concerned about the user end of it. 
Exactly, because yeah. they're trying to sell it to us like it's no big deal, blah, 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 blah. Not I'm sure going, I agree with minute. that. It's a laser. Right. It, it requires variance and permitting. No, no, no. If you ever have issues, I can direct you to the people that have been involved in the safety end of it. And I haven't seen it really coming strongly into the U.S. market because I think they're sort of in denial about the variance process. Right. And, right, and that, that they have to do that. I know the guys, the safety consultants they're working with, though, and um, I'd be, you know, I, I'd be curious what they have to say about it. Um, I, yeah, it's, I would be, I would be skeptical if I was a lighting company and they were approaching me until I knew that they could um, get me a variance rather than, okay, so you want me to talk a little technical language or not about the variance process? So yeah, this is, I, I understand yeah. it. I'm sorry, if I could, if I can just interrupt for one moment. Yes. Just sure. to say, I think the official uh, part of this is over, but I'm happy to have everybody talk more about, you know, other business and things like that. So that <laughs> let's have a let's have a party now. So go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Patrick. I have to roll. Thank sorry, you. I didn't mean that. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Take care. I don't want to upstage you, but it's kind of important to know in this country when you're operating in the legalities of the uh, variance process. Um, so very simply put, you're not supposed to buy. You're not supposed to be sold a laser product for entertainment purposes unless the buyer has a variance already. Technically, right. they shouldn't ship it to you. And that's, it's always done. A lot of people are doing it. And you definitely shouldn't use it unless you have a variance. So, um, and, and, uh, and I don't know what companies do now. Um, I work with a handful, um, and there's some that will be sure that you get their variance. Most don't, but in the day, and I'm going back, I've been in this business 25 years, we never sold a, a, a laser to anybody unless we also obtained their variance for them. And we would do the submission, and we would make sure they had it and before we actually delivered the laser. Um, but it, it all changed when the technology changed. And... Um, so anyway, I, I'm I, I'm sort of in a position where I don't want to I, I don't want to say too much, but you're big enough you wouldn't want to take a risk. Um, oh like, no no, I, I understand all the stuff you're saying. I just okay. It's it's very interesting. Julie Smith, who's selling them on behalf of Clay Packy down in Texas, is a dear friend of mine, and in fact, okay. I know all the people at Clay Packy in Italy. And, so and as long as they understand that, I guess what I would recommend, if anything, to them is that they be sure when they sell them to any company, that that company has their variance from the government. Well, but here, here's my, Roberta, here's my concern. Uh, rock and roll is a bunch of gypsies. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I was one of those guys starting in 68 that drove the truck all night, yep. uh, did, did the rigging, tied the power in, ran the light board, tore it down and started yep. over. And yep. it's so dangerous and, and, and it's amazing yep. more people weren't killed. Well, I think this is kind of back there because they're trying to, they're, there's so many, there's a lot of big good companies that would do it correctly. My company would do it correctly. We right. would only let Bob or Susan do it if he or she was trained. Those but are powerful. So many more small and mid-sized companies that would get the variants, not train the people right. and go cause damage. And that scares me to death. I know you're, and you're absolutely right. Um, my policy as a laser, I will not get somebody a variance unless they've had LSO training from me or Patrick, one of the two of us. You have to have laser safety training. And then, and then I want to see you operate. I, you know, I want to see if I can't be there physically, I want a video of you operating but. them. And that's, but, but it's, you know, our country's so big, they don't really monitor it from the government level. And I agree with you. There's potential for risk. That's On not the what scares me is the monitoring. Uh, lasers to me is like when, when we have a giant install department, we sell lights every day, do installations to churches. And it's yep. always the same story. We, we, we trade, train three people at the church on how to run the light system. Yep. And a year from now, they don't go to that church, but there's somebody still running the lights. And that's what's going to happen. Where was the handoff? You're going to train handoff. somebody on how to run these laser yep. xylos, and, and they're going to be gone, and they'll just look at Bob and say, oh, hell, Bob, you can I do know. it. Oh, no, you're preaching to the choir. I totally get it. I totally understand. And it is, it is a concern. Um, Lasers it, need to stay with laser people. Yeah. <laughs> now, on the flip side of the good news is um, actual reported accidents and in incidences in our industry are very, very low. So intentional or not, somebody's doing something right, even when there's a handoff. Yeah. Yeah. But
but um, what what kind of record keeping is there? I'd always want to see, I want to see that certificate from somebody that you've, certificate of successful completion of training. That's, that would be my thing. But yeah, they are intense, they're a laser and they're, yeah, it's a great product. I think it has real use, but great opportunity for misuse. <laughs> That's the part that concerns me and we agree on that. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, well, nice thank you all very much. I got another Zoom to jump to. Great. Thank if you for your time. Thank you. If I can do anything, reach out to me and uh, I'll be glad to give you an answer. And uh, we'll just keep fingers crossed and move forward. And again, know that moving forward, I've got this small group of, of firms that, that need a, a landing strip on the other side of New Year. Yeah. Uh, biggest, biggest part of it is the manufacturer. I mean, they're just, they're in a bad spot too. So. Yeah. They are. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. Appreciate it. Take Thanks, care. Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Now that he's gone, we can all really say what we think. <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, I want their GPS uh, those the senators their GPS coordinates, and we can just uh, zap them. <laughs> yeah. That's it's right. We've got some special skills. <laughs> we could send drones, dude. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Well, I'm really glad you. I don't. How I thank you, Patrick, for putting this together and bringing it to our attention in a timely fashion. I'm just um, really glad I happened to see the email of ten yeah. minutes before the Zoom call. You know, and that you were available. Yeah. <laughs> Well, sorry. that I'm not happy about, but, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, sorry I went out really. late, but I only found out about this like a day or so ago, and I had to put the website together and all that kind of stuff. So at midnight or so, I sent out the email. No, I'm sorry I didn't send it to you. I, I, I get all the emails from Nam and Ellie and all those, and I and in the future, I just don't, I figure, you, yeah, I should have sent it to you. Oh, oh they directly there. contacted me Monday. So that was the very they first did. I heard of it. Well, that's how they did it. Oh, okay, yeah. great. It wasn't through... Yeah, I get. I, I always have to look through that box, you know, where all that is kind of like spam, but it's not. And uh, most of my spam, it, which isn't spam, promoting promotions, that's what they call it, mm -hmm. are industry stuff. And I always look at NAM, I always look at LDI, and I always look at PLSN, and um, because that's our industry, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's been opportunity to be involved in this uh, for a while now, but I, it's really hitting a hot because the other just ran out and. Yeah, and he's right. The fact that we all that we don't hire a lot of for under PPP, right? Mo most of our people are hired under contract. This has been a problem, you know, for them getting anything uh, to speak of because they aren't even employed. They're self-employed. That would be me, for instance. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, hey, I, I just want to uh, say thanks to everybody. Good to see you all. And yeah, I'm going to jump off so I can fill out that form and uh, submit all that paperwork. Tom, Thanks, it's good Tom. to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Really good to see, see you. you, Tom. We're all here. We're all here working. Thanks. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm trying. Right. <laughs> Take care, Cheers. my friend. Yep, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.